right, so here we go into podcast number eight as we wrap up the first half of season six of The Walking Dead. What a journey it's been. Can you believe it? Eight weeks. Eight wow. weeks. I, joining us by phone, of course, we've got Matt. Matt was not about to miss a podcast. Not even the no, land of dreams not. couldn't no. stop that. Can we say he's here via satellite, even though he's really not? That just sounds cooler. Yeah. Joining us satellite. via satellite. Think, oh, yeah. That <laughs> Matt felt does. Good. I'm not an expert on cell phones, but I think they do work through satellites. Is that right? Uh, towers? Yeah, so that feels even, I feel even better by that, that I'm live via satellite. We're going to get to the bottom of this. But, <laughs> yeah. What, um, what are we here to talk about again? Uh, is this Game of Thrones? Is that what we're here to talk about? Satellites. No. Satellites in the cell phone business and industry. Yes. I just had a wicked case of deja vu. Woo. Anyways, um, <laughs> we're heading into the midseason. Fi- well, we're heading out of the midseason finale yep. of The Walking Dead. Uh, first, let me go. Uh, JP, what were your thoughts? I don't know about you guys. All I want for Christmas is for Sam and Ron to die. Right? Be dead. I'm tired of them. <laughs> Jesus Christ. They're the worst offsprings in history. I mean, like, she really It's uh, My buddy Cameron asked me. He was like, now, Jess is awesome. We like her. She's, yeah. she's a great addition. We hope that, you know, she doesn't go like the comic book. Um, you oh, know, boy. that was it's so brutal. We hope that she sticks around. But, uh, you know, her husband was a douche. Her youngest yep. kid is a wussy and her other child is just a douchebag. That was by far the most gratifying scene is Carl telling Ron that his dad was an asshole. That was probably my favorite yeah. part of that episode. Yeah. <laughs> Matt, what were your thoughts? I, JP, I've never agreed with you more than I agree with you now. Those are the two shittiest kids that I have ever seen ah, on TV geez. in my entire life. And uh, I really hope they die. Yeah. Have you ever, I mean, have you ever felt so good to wish death on two children? Well, uh, you know. Only I, a couple of times. But yeah. This is right up there in the top three. I work at a grocery store, so I hate on children in general. They're really pesky and annoying. <laughs> so for me, it's a pretty normal thing. Right. Yeah, I, I thought this episode, all right, so uh, let's go. I was going to say left to right, but, you know, Matt, you're here in spirit, so I'm still going to refer to you as Just to my right. that I'm right there in that chair. Absolutely. Astral projection. So um, were you satisfied, JP, with this midseason finale? Man, I mean. We won't rate it yet, but were you yeah, satisfied? Yeah, I, I really thought the body count was going to be super high. I, the only person that died was Diane, and she was the one Alexandrian I really liked. You right. Know? So I, I was a little bummed. I, I thought the ending was kind of anticlimactic. You know, they're just holding hands. Walking out, and yeah, yeah. So I mean, I, I wasn't I blown thought it away. Was fine by that it. Deanna died. You thought it was fine that Deanna died? Oh no. Yeah, yeah. Sure story. Has sure story come and gone. There was no need for it anymore. I'm really glad that the uh, that the doctor chick has been kidnapped. Oh, uh, I, I, I knew Matt was Matt was in Florida going yes as oh, soon as boy. he took her. Yes, I was so happy. Oh my god. I have a question I was like, yeah, that's about fine. that. Put wolf. your guns on the ground. That's fine. Yeah, yeah. He, he, there's three of you. You're outnumbered, but whatever. Just put your guns down. Let him I, take her. I have a question contrary to what that wolf says. Um, but first, I will say this: if even if you like I said we even if you don't read the comics, we know we've kind of got a mixed crowd. Half of you like us talking about the comics. Half of you don't but you know it's kind of like we got to show our work here um deanna was a female uh counterpart to douglas in the comics and i will say deanna went out with a lot more dignity than douglas did wouldn't you say uh jp yeah i'll I'll agree with that deanna went out with a sense of pride and she you know she she went out she wouldn't off herself yeah you know i mean even though it was pointless she just went out within a blaze of glory she kind of looked scary herself really weird when she uh when they were coming down the hallway and she used the bullets on the zombies and then they had that like that shot of her like screaming in slow motion i i it kind of like i had to expect her to turn like a demon or something and start biting off zombies heads like it was a really weird moment yeah she was it was uh, someone was someone told me they, they they said uh I thought she was a zombie there for a split second. I mean, she she kind of looked freaky. I was really hoping she was going to be chowing down on baby Judith. I did, too. Cr- yes, yeah, I yeah. did, too. I was like, man, this is gnarly. Yeah, and yeah. then it, she's like... And I don't like, say gnarly often. She's like, I'm still alive. Yeah. <laughs> And I was like, yeah, wah, she was wah, very wah. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's good. It's She's good. like, I'm still here. I'm, I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. Um, uh, I will scary. say that. I'm not eating your baby. Was anyone else on the edge of their seat, though, during the Maggie scene? When Maggie was getting like, like, chased and you know she was about an inch away from oh, this horde boy. i mean dude i was on the edge of my seat going go maggie go maggie and then the ladder was yeah jumping ladder to ladder that was ooh. that was Woo! intense yeah. my dad my dad i watched it with my dad and my family and my dad paused it and was like all right let's just all take a breath to recuperate from that scene yeah <laughs> because it was, it was intense <laughs> that that was definitely a high point of the episode too there were a lot of peaks and a lot of valleys in this episode 
Right, and, and, yeah. and speaking of, of Valley, flawed, not flawed storytelling, I don't know how to say it without sounding pretentious, but I feel like the way they wrote the wolf, if he was oh, as dude. he said he was, unless Morgan got to him, I felt like he should have killed every single that's one of I, them. That's all he's been saying since he got to Alexandria. I'm going to kill everybody. I'm going to kill the women, the children. Yeah. And he finally that's has everyone code. at his mercy, and he does nothing. Yeah. Nothing. It says, that's my code. And then, you know, it says, basically makes Morgan feel like he's not getting to him at all. <sighs> what a big phony baloney. I mean, I, I really felt like <laughs> it, it, maybe Morgan got to him, but if he didn't, then that completely goes against everything. I think he he's said. got the hots for the chubby doctor lady, and he just doesn't want to turn her off. Uh, he doesn't yeah. know he she's not. Have- he can have her. No, but that's the thing. Yeah, I wasn't bisexual. really that tense during the whole be. Maggie scene because I felt like they're not going to kill her off. They're, gonna, they're not going to kill her. But when the whole the fight between Carol and uh, and Morgan was going on, like I was really like I was invested. I was on the you know was, watching I'm really what's going to happen because they both meant business, man. They were ready to like hurt each other. I really kind of wanted Carol to kill Morgan in that moment. Morgan really pissed me off because it's like I know that Carol doesn't trust him. They don't really like each other. But here you have a guy tied up who is with a group that was mutilating you know, people where you stay, innocent people that did nothing wrong, and she wants to kill him, and you're willing to body slam. You know, I mean, I, you're pretty much willing to kill her to save a killer. I, it just, right. I, you know, and I understand. Don't get me wrong. Somebody's going to comment and be like, no, Morgan was, no, I get why Morgan did what he did, and I, I understand and I applaud his attempt to keep the peace but in keeping the peace i mean he rock bottom yeah <laughs> carol man I, I thought she was gonna land on oh, yeah. her knife and i thought it was gonna be real I, ugly i, I yeah, did that's too when he I was slammed thinking, yeah. and it stopped i thought she's laying on her knife oh, because i read a spoiler site which i try not to ever do but someone had sent me a link and i read a spoiler site that actually said carol was going to die that episode um this is all predictions i wouldn't read anything if it was released by them but it was it was predictions that and these people are usually right it's like the spoiling dead or something mm-hmm. something like that and they said Carol Ooh, would that's die. A catchy name. It is right. It's almost like as catchy as the podcasting did. Uh-huh. But um, All, almost, almost <laughs> no. as catchy. But they said Carol was going to die by the wolf, and I thought, man, that would. I don't. I, Carol's on my. And we'll address uh, JP, uh, Matt and I have to redeem ourselves with oh, yeah. a listener named Kay here in just a little while. Um, but we'll oh, get to oh, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. We'll, we'll talk get to about that. Her in a second. Mm. But I will say that um, you know I really, really thought that uh, that wouldn't be good storytelling because if he killed Carol, which would be like a oh my god, yeah, the moment, wolf killing Carol, then, and yeah. then that would really be the eye opening moment for Morgan to realize I've either got to kill or get the hell out of here. You know, I mean. But they right. didn't, and I'm actually kind of like Glenn. I'm kind of relieved because I really didn't want Carol to go. I really like Carol. I mean, if you're talking about a, uh, other than maybe Glenn, I would argue. I think in my my book, Glenn has the most realistic character progression, but Carol has major character she's progression. Been on quite the journey for sure. I mean, she she was like the oh, beaten yeah. housewife to now she's the abusing housewife. Yeah. Well, how was it? There was there was five people in that room, and. And, they, and he's got the doctor at gunpoint, and nobody like if I was in that room, I'd be like, That's, "You picked the wrong person to take a hostage. Just shoot her, dude. And, I don't, and, they don't care." And here's my problem too: they're all crack shots. You know, everybody in the Walking Dead world uh, right? can get yeah. head shots with their eyes closed. This guy's head was way out of the. You know, I mean, any he, one of them could have taken her out. Saying, oh. I mean, they could have just pot. And this wasn't even like a gun. I know that. I don't know how reflexes work, but you know, I can understand the point if they got a gun to someone's head, you don't want to shoot them because you don't know if their finger will tense up and kill the person. He just had a knife like loosely yeah. dangling on her neck. If you'd have shot him in the head, he'd have fell back, maybe took her down, and but everything would have been okay. Maybe they realize that any gunshot's going to bring the horde down there to them, you know? I mean, you got to remember what's and, going on. And maybe that's, uh, that's a very a good, good point. point. Or maybe yeah. they realize we just do not like this lesbian doctor. Nobody cares no, for her. Not a, not a fan. Lesbian at all. terror rocks. <laughs> but let's be, but you know um, no I was actually Tara was who I thought was definitely going to die too and I was pretty mm-hmm. relieved to say and all this is actually the, the the K is listening hearing me say I was relieved that these people didn't die who and going to be like K? we'll talk about her in just a second but I, I definitely thought Tara was going to go and I really like Tara she's come a long ways to be in just kind of a background like I thought they had her there just to kill her for yeah. effect and now yeah. she's actually starting to become a character i like coming into her own but yeah i definitely thought more mainers were gonna die at least one or two besides diana Lord yep. of mercy because no way out's like one of my favorite arcs from the comics and just it is so many people it's like the prison up. they take so yeah. many characters out what all right now it's comic book spoilers close your ears for about 10 15 seconds because i don't remember this what happened to aaron in the comics because we didn't see him this episode at all right that's right. You know, I, I'm pretty oh, sure yeah. he survives that. Yeah, I thought so. What about Heath? Does Heath survive that? 
I want to say so. Because we didn't see either one yeah, of them he, in the show yeah. during any of this. I mean, there's a lot of Alexandrians that were mm-hmm. like, or where the hell are they right now? Yeah, I think everyone there was just a lot of stuff that happened down. in this episode, but they didn't like. And there's still there's still a lot of like questions that they didn't answer. But it it, it just felt like the story was very contained just to Rick and them. Yeah. Uh, it, it, even though there was like a lot of different, there's a lot of different groups in Alexandria. I don't know. They didn't answer like any question. Would you have hid in the attic? Those, those houses probably have attics, right? With the little trap door. That oh, starting yeah. at eight hundred thousand, they better have an yeah, attic. Yeah, that, that's where I would have been up in the attic. Or seven hundred thousand. Can walkers like climb those step ladder things? Not no if way. you pull them up. Yeah. Yeah, oh, I was thinking smart. that too. Yeah, put all the supplies up there. Right. I, I was thinking that too. As soon as they stepped out the door, I'm like, you know, I would have put a sheet over that kid's head and then just held his hand and been like, you know, you shut the hell up and Stop follow us. Mouth or yeah. soon, the first time he said mom and nothing happened, it's like, okay, whew, we're good. Then he says imagine, it again. I'm like, this little bastard. I imagine her grip was getting tighter and tighter as he kept saying that. Like, he said it like the three times before they cut the episode. It's, it's like her grip. Like, eventually she's going to be like, ow, ow, ow. <laughs> she should get looser and looser and just let the little bastard drift off into oh, the sea of boy. walkers. But that, it's that, like carrying your uh, kid around in Kmart or something like that, and they're like, "Mom, mom." It's like, it's over here. like come on, the newborn Judith. Which I mean, I don't think she's uh, quite a newborn, but the infant Judith is even quiet during all of this. It's sad that your mother has to tell you to pretend to be brave. Uh, pretend uh, to be brave. It's that cut. <laughs> I it mean, I know no not everybody will survive. Whatsoever. Oh no, I've never respected anyone with a bowl cut. No way. Never, never. Screw you, Jonathan Taylor Thomas. Yeah. <laughs> 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 All right, but let's get to this comment. So we got a really, uh, I don't know if you saw it, Matt, but I'm going to read it anyway for the listeners. A very interesting comment that I have a lot of respect for, and this is in no way going to be insulting to Miss Kay. So no we're one's We're just going to answer this. No You're one's on blast. Anyone? No, no. no. We're not, I, I'll tell you right now, even if it's contradictory, we don't mind. That's what the whole point of the podcast is, discussion. If you disagree Speak with freely. something we say, yeah. please do it in a respectful manner. I mean, we will happily, respectfully reply to you as, you know, but uh, we love if you have a difference of opinion, please tell it. We're not going to, uh, you know, insult you or hate you for it. Granted, again, it's it's no. it's, it's 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 not We're insulting. Not comment Nazis, um, right? Th- no. But this is a very very good <laughs> comment from K. Uh, Mid- Midrano, Midrano. K, we're going to f- call you yeah. from here on out. Yeah, uh, I'm, she sure says, you're doing, I'm sure she's loving it so far. I'm sure she's like, yeah, that's she's exactly like, how you it. She's like, my name is Midrano. Yeah, she's not liking me at all right now. But she said, I want to start off by saying I love your podcast. Thank you, Kay. And can't oh, wait for your comments okay, on tonight's nice. episode, okay. talking about last night's. That being said, you guys kind of disappointed me. Because on the season opener, mm-hmm. you guys said you wanted The Walking Dead that wasn't afraid to take out core characters. But now that they fake out Glenn's death and Justin and Matt had no problem with it. I love Glenn, but come on. You can't tease a death and then not follow through with it. I feel like some essential... No, oh, excuse me. I feel like someone essential to the group has to go, and I hate to say it, it's got to be Daryl. Since they pulled this shit on us, <laughs> they got to deliver this season on impacting death. Let me know what your thoughts are on this overall. I love what you guys are doing. Much love from California. So, to, from Virginia to California, Kay, much love right back to you, and we appreciate well, it. Sounds comment. like Kay and I are on the same page Kay, from last week. Kay yeah. and JP are on point. Matt, I'm going to say what I've got to say, and then you can say what you've got to say in defense of of our actions. Okay. We're on trial here. Okay. Okay, what I will say is you are right. Absolutely right. I it was it was completely uh contradictory to what I had originally said and even more so for me than Matt because I had said Glenn in the first. I was like mm. just kill Glenn. I didn't mean it was kind of like I just threw a name out there. I didn't actually mean Glenn. My like top 3 please don't kill him list is probably Rick Michonne and Glenn. Please don't kill him. Other than that, everyone's fair game. But what I will say is that while I do agree that I do want it to get back to killing core characters, there are a lot of core characters that they can kill. There will always be characters that each one of us do not want to die, no matter what. And Glenn is just that character for me. So, though I want core characters to die, I don't want Glenn to die. Um, And especially, it might have more so been that way. I feel like Glenn deserved a more glorious death than to just topple off a dumpster and, and that, get his That's kind of what out. I loved about it, though, right. when I assumed he it's died. It's more realistic, yeah. you know, and not everybody gets glory in real life. No. Um, but so, my, that was probably my main reason. You were leading with your heart, you know? Right. You didn't want to see him go. Yeah, I, did, right. I just didn't want to see uh, Glenn go. I do, like now, but I will say this, and then I'll let Matt talk. Um, Kay, uh, K, I agree with you 110%. Daryl's gots to go. 
that that would be a huge death, and I feel like they're going to let Negan be the one to do it. I feel like Daryl's going to die, maybe even this season at the hands of Negan, because what better way to make us hate him out the gate than to have him kill off teen heartthrob Daryl Dixon? All right, Matt, uh, you may defend yourself. Okay, well, I don't know how I'm supposed to top that because that was really that was that was uh, very comprehensive, very heartwarming. You spoke I know I rambled. I apologize. Very I genuine. To make sure that I, said nice. it all. I, I could tell that had been gnawing at you for some time. A little bit. Yeah. I don't want. I don't like listeners being disappointed in us. You know, mm. you can call us douchebags no, no, all like day, anybody. but disappointed. But it's, like, yeah, it's like she's not mad. She's disappointed. You're just right. Guys, it's like a parent. Like, he's like, I'm not mad. I'm just disappointed. Yeah. Well, no, and I'm going to tell you, that was a really well-worded, that's the first time that I've heard that message, uh, the way that you read it. I don't know if it was just the inflection that you were giving it or her writing skills, but that was probably the sexiest comment Some that I've ever pros. heard probably uh, both. or ever read or anything. That was, I mean, she, I respect her opinion, and I respect her calling me out on my BS, um, because <laughs> I'm, I'm going to tell you what, and this is, this is directed at Kay. Kay, I'm sorry that I've, that I've let you down. I'm sorry that I disappointed you. I never want to do it again. Can we overlay... Um, like boys to men on bended knee behind this, like later on. <laughs> I'm sure I can find that. That's possible. Just really add to it. Like, baby, baby, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, but um, I, uh, you know, I, there's like you said, there's certain characters that we want to see that we wouldn't mind seeing dying. There's certain characters that we don't want to see. I, I wouldn't mind seeing them uh, kill some core characters. I really like Glenn, so I just don't. I don't want to see him go. But anybody else, yeah, I don't. I do, I just feel like they're not going to kill people like uh, uh, Rick. And uh, Michonne and uh, and Daryl, like people who are the, it's the, the viewers tune in for, they're gonna give they're not gonna give up on all that money uh, and all those viewers that are coming in. So I think of it as from a production standpoint of who they would kill off. Then again, I, I want to go back to when they were surprising us, like you know, like Beth's death and and Lori's death. You know, things like you just didn't expect it to happen. They just happened. And this season has been really slow. Yeah, and oh, yeah. So I just want to, you know, that's what we weren't, we didn't know that that was going to happen from the very first episode. Uh, so when we were talking about that, we weren't, we were anticipating a really big, crazy season. That's, you know, that's what it was, what it was let it left off on uh, from last season. So we were kind of expecting that. Now that we're at the mid season finale, we haven't seen as much. So we're kind of, I, I feel that I'm a little more grateful for smaller things that have happened because at least it's better than nothing. Absolutely. Very, very uh, well spoken. I'm telling you though, the so that that's very last thing, scene. Thank you, Kay, for writing no. in, and uh, please, you know, give your comments back and, and keep keep talking to us, and uh, call me sometime. I want to take you out for a nice seafood dinner. <laughs> yeah, Kay's and, all right. Uh, yeah, we like it, Kay. Yeah, but, but JP, you were but saying no, no, just that last season where nothing really happens. We assume that that Sam's going to screw everything up. That was just like kicking the groin to me. I mean, give me something to, to you know. I got to wait two months, right? I just, right. I don't give know. me something to gnaw on while yeah. I'm waiting. You know, I like that first scene way better. That's probably my favorite scene where the ants are coming down the windowsill and Good eating. Good foreshadowing. The, yeah, you know? that that was a beautiful shot. I've actually got another comment from Karsten OKK um, that we'll talk about. Um, the integrity of insulin here in just a little bit, uh, but we'll save oh. that and try to talk more about this episode. Mm-hmm. We'll get to the comment kind of towards the end. So, um, if you are listening, uh, Karsten, OKK, hang tight, and we'll get to you here uh, in just a little bit. But uh, going back to the episode, I thought, uh, does it look like Rick's kind of uh, moving past his hatred of Father Gabriel a little bit? Because he kind of he's you know when he said, "I'll follow you," yeah. yada, yada, yada. Rick was kind of like, "I yeah. know you." Will. I think he's bringing him back in the fold. I think he also realizes that the most, the the more people they have in the group right now, the better. Right, right, oh, right. Well, Strength I, I do numbers, like the whole man. exchange of of uh, Jesus. Uh, not Jesus, sorry, Father Gabriel's like, I'm not gonna, yeah, I'm not gonna run away. I'm not gonna leave this time. You know, all Rick has to say is, I know. I know. I know. Okay, was that? Andrew Lincoln, is that you? <laughs> right. <laughs> Did you guys get Andrew Lincoln Uh-oh. in the studio? Uh-oh. That's amazing. Man, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. I actually pulled out our headphone jack. So, Matt, if you said something very funny there, we did not laugh at you because you aren't funny. We didn't laugh at you because we didn't hear it. Um, <laughs> oh, thank you for letting me know that. Thank you. <laughs> but uh, I was kind of not in a. I mean, and then when I say let down, I think some people will take that too hard. Like when I say I was let down by, they think I'm saying it was awful. No, but I was kind of let down by the Carl, the Carl Ron thing. I love that Raw, Ron, uh, uh, Carl told him his dad was an asshole. That yeah. was fantastic. Needed to be said. Good job, Carl. I thought Way more to was going to happen than that. And then I thought when Carl followed him to his room, which he didn't have that cool baseball bat silencer, so I figured he probably won't shoot him. But when he pulled the gun out for a brief second, I thought we were kind of getting to the uh, Carl, was it Billy scene? Not Billy, Billy, the, the twin that he killed 
in the comic. Remember that? Yeah. How he snuck yeah. in real badass. The and murderous took him little kid. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I thought we were kind of getting to that. Like he had told the parents, oh, everything's fine. And he was going to go upstairs and just kind of silently Whack off him. Ron. Yeah. And then when he didn't, I'm like, man, Carl from season three would have shot him in the face so fast. I, I guess he still yeah. feels like they'd be cock blocking his dad with with the Very special true. lady. Very I think it true. all comes down to that. And Rick probably watched American Horror Story season one, so he really knows what oh, Jesse can do. Boy. Yeah. <laughs> but man, I, I don't know. I just really wanted more out of that. I was just I was waiting. I think my problem with this this episode was I was waiting waiting for that. <gasps> yeah, and it never and came. It never, it really never happened. Never came. Yeah. You know, mid-season uh, finales yeah, are walking dead strong At least strong three points. different times, I was waiting for Carl to get his eyes shot out. Like, I figured that would be a really good thing to end this, the mid-season on. Never happened. That's how that, that's how that uh, comic ended, with half his face missing. And he's like, Dad? Yeah. And then, you know. Rick looks back, and he's just, yeah, half yeah. his face is gone. Yeah, and then, I mean, he might take him to a hospital, but it doesn't it don't go for much further past that. That would have been so cool to have Ron shoot have Carl turn, half his face be gone, and just say, Dad? And then it cut out. That's what I'm saying. Just like like a bird's eye view of Rick holding Carl as all the zombies are all around him. Yeah, it would just be like, oh. Just watching uh, uh, Sam getting eaten with his mom. It would be fantastic. No, I don't want Jesse to get eaten. Sam getting eaten with his brother. We got little brat saying, Mom, Mom. I wish that she, I don't, I can't remember the lineup. I wish it was like Jesse, Ron, and then the little brat. So then she could just let go of Ron's hand and all of her problems would go away. Yep, jettison that dude away. I think he was away. holding on to his mom's hand, so it was running. But so maybe, maybe him and Ron can both be eaten. I'm fine with that. I'm perfectly fine with that. I, yeah. Like I said, I, I'm not a big fan of either. And that little kid, man, I mean. Just awful. It, this is why you have to take kids outside the wall, say, now don't come back till you're a man. Yeah. <laughs> Go kill a walker or two. It's like the zombie, uh, the zombie apocalypse equivalent of Rumspringer. Right, right, absolutely. It's like you have to go find yourself. I mean, you have to go out. You know, some tribes make you wear uh, gloves full of bee, uh, stinging um, ants. I'm sure you've seen oh, that, right? I've bullet never ants. Heard of that. Oh, look it up. There's some tribes that becoming a man means you wear this glove with bullet ants lined in it. And I mean, they mm. call them that because it feels, you know, it's rough. <laughs> like, uh, I feel like, guys, I don't think I'm good on this tribe. I think I'm going to go find right. a less painful I'm going to go to the Walking Maybe Dead like tribe. The, the hang out in the recliner tribe. Some tribes do that. I feel like the Alexandrian tribe should open the gates, kick you out, and say, don't come back till you have two walker heads. Shut the gate and be, be like, awesome. you know, may, may may peace be with you <laughs> and you. Give I don't think anyone would ever come and back, and though. Five bullets and a gun. Right, yeah. right. I really, I don't know. I, but like I said, it was a good episode. I just, I was waiting for that <gasps> moment, and it never happened. Yeah. Except, I mean, uh, I guess somebody could argue the the whole, you know, the kids saying mom was, <gasps> but it it didn't really hit me that bad. It's like it ended, and I was like, what? I know. It feels like it should be the episode yeah. before the midseason right. finale. You know, right. it feels like we should have one more episode before they break. And their track record with with midseason finales has been pretty much awesome. I mean, yeah. Herschel's death midseason yeah. finale. Um, Sophia you know, in Sophia in the barn midseason yeah. finale. Um, you know some good stuff. Now, what what was the season three mid mid season finale? Was that uh, the governor getting the glass in his eye? And uh, I think so. Was that yeah. was that the mid season throwdown finale? with him and Michonne? Yeah. yeah, somewhere in that time frame. So I mean that was good too. And then you have this one that's just kind of like, meh. yeah. Which last season's mid season finale really wasn't all that great either. They just kind of like strolled into Alexandria and it was like doom. Mm. You know. So um, I'm thinking maybe they'll make up for it with the season finale. I feel like Negan's coming in soon. Uh, there have been sightings of Jesus, and no, we're not talking about Toast and the the Christian religious figure. We're talking about <laughs> Paul Monroe. Um, yep. You know, there have been sightings of him on set and his stunt double, and so that's exciting. So I think the second half is really going to kick it into high gear. Um, I hope. So did you guys see oh, yeah, that that, that hidden yeah. scene with Negan's crew no, stopping Daryl? Oh, tell boy. Tell me about it. I did not. Uh, I have to be at work very early. I didn't stay up. Abraham, Daryl, and uh, Sasha. You know, they're on the road in the gas truck back home, and and that crew that was hounding Daryl through the woods, they stop him in the middle of the road, and sure enough, it's Negan's fellas. They're like, "What you got is not yours anymore. It's Negan's." So we have officially been introduced to the saviors. Yeah. Yep. How so about it seems. that? Yeah. Man, someone was telling me though, it was the guy you saw Dwight? Because someone was telling me that they thought that the guy that had stole Daryl's crossbow was going to be Dwight. Yeah, it definitely seems. See, and I, I can get people thinking that, yeah, but no, this guy's this got to be Dwight, right? Because he's, he's like he's speaking for Negan directly. He's one of Dwight's definitely Negan's right hand guy. Um, 
But this guy, I feel like too, because this the the guy that was uh, with that took Daryl's stuff said he had never killed anyone. So I figured like if they caught him on fire, mutilated him or something, maybe it would like have the two face effect, like it would push him over the edge to well, start being. You got to remember, he's got that chick with him, and the whole reason Negan did that, you know, Negan takes your woman, and if you fool around with her after she's his. He takes a hot iron to your face. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, Negan's got a whole concubine of, of ladies. Negan has got a very, very interesting... Uh, In the uh, comic. A very, very interesting network of how things... I don't know if network's right. He's got a very interesting layout of how things function in his society. You know what I mean? I mean, it's... it's yeah, he's got a code. Yeah, it's, it's really weird. And it's, 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 it's a good segue, too, talking about um, them. Because, all right, so we had made a comment about insulin. So, um, hmm. Karsten OKK had a very interesting comment, uh, a very, very good comment. They definitely had done their uh, research here. I'm saying there because I don't know if Karsten's a guy or a girl. So, uh, he or she said, if there are 5,000 zombies to every human, which is right, that's what they say the number is, 5,000 zombies to every human in the Walking Dead universe, that means there are 60,000 humans left uh, in the U.S. I would assume if insulin doesn't spoil, ding, 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 it does. That there is yeah. way more than a two-year supply for anyone in the U.S. with diabetes. About 9% of people in the U.S. have diabetes, and considering the whole survival of the fittest thing, let's assume that number had gone down to 5%. There's definitely plenty of insulin for 3,000 people around. Same with ammunition and guns. Sure, but to find ammunition and guns might not always be easy, but even getting out of that, because you could find an army station like they did in the comics, whatever. Um, actually, from what I, I did a little research, and I didn't spend a lot of time on it, but I had found that actually insulin does expire. I found a tag that said, never use insulin if expired. The expiration date will be stamped on the vial or pen. Remember, if not in the fridge, the date... I'm spitting. The date on the vial or pen does not apply. You must throw it away 28 days since outside the fridge. Granted, they had it in a cooler, but I doubt that's keeping it fridge cold, meaning two years-ish into the zombie apocalypse. That probably insulin, I'm not saying it's impossible, but it probably would be pretty hard to come by. So, um, I agree with you. I agree with very you Very good because, numbers I mean, there. Like, the, the main thing is the refrigeration. It, and and the, the electricity is probably very hard to come by uh, at this point now, unless you've got to like, set up yourself to like, you know, solar panels or generators or whatever. So most of that's going to have spoiled by now. Right. So while it is possible for someone to have insulin, it would be very, very hard. So very good comment. Um, but insulin does have an expiration date. And I can't remember. Uh, we have jobs, remember. We don't get paid yeah. to do this. So um, I didn't have time to go back and look at exactly what we had said about insulin. But yeah, um, I don't remember you either. Know, um, but so you think Wilford Brimley probably wouldn't have survived the uh, the zombie holocaust? Probably not. No. <laughs> probably not. But, um, I yeah, wonder so what that, age cutoff would, that our that our listeners would get that reference of Wilfred Brimley and diabetes. Like, how young would they have? There's got to be like some listeners that are like 15, 16 years old. They're like, I don't know who that is and what they're talking diabetes. about. Diabetes. Well, you know what? We we I don't want them as listeners. If they don't know who Wilfred Brimley is, then just you know, <laughs> shove off. Uh, Google that. Google well, all right. that. I guess it's, yeah, someone's defensive of Wilford Brimley. I mean, I guess Look, he needs some defense, but all right. In the Walking Dead world, I think we need his sage wisdom, quite frankly. I think he should have played Herschel, to be quite okay. honest. <laughs> but that's just me. Diabetes. Okay. Yeah. That's just me. <laughs> it, wasn't in the gov- it wasn't the governor that killed me. It was diabetes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that was good. And every time you talk about Wilford Brimley, you got to end it with that. Just... All right, so this episode will obviously probably be a little bit longer, considering it was a mid-season finale. All right, mm-hmm. uh, JP, what are your feelings about Morgan and Carol, that whole throwdown? What did you think? Like I said, I, just, I thought it was very... Um, what did I think of that? I didn't like the wolf. I, th- I thought they had a pretty good fight, though. They they let their feelings out, which is always healthy. They, they had a, mm-hmm. a, a good, honest discourse. I feel like Morgan was holding back on Carol, though, because I feel like if he really wanted to, he would have just whooped the hell out yeah, of Carol. I mean, he's a badass. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's got this whole, like, seeing red rage thing mm-hmm. that he kind of, like, goes blue Ryu. Anybody that plays Street Fighter might know what I'm talking about. Um, you know, oh, he wow. just, like, goes crazy and, and, and stabs you in the throat and stuff. So, I don't know. But I, I don't know. I, I really felt kind of like he... I don't know. Like I said, I felt betrayed is how I felt. I know he wasn't betraying anybody, but I just I felt betrayed as the viewer. I'm like, come on, Morgan. Carol was a little hasty, though. Morgan oh, said yeah. out of the gate, he was like, let's settle this once this storm has passed. He yeah. said that out front, and she just wasn't having it. Yeah, and I mean, she was. he did try to keep her out of the basement and told her, yeah. "Let's you will go down there afterwards. But, 
you know. It's like, but I see her point, well, they too, they already talked about dead. this, you know? They had that intervention with him, and they were like, you've got to start killing again. You can't be doing this. And then I guess it was like the final straw kind of thing. I thought she was going to stab him. Like, I honestly thought she was ready to stab him. I think she would have. I think, yeah, I think yeah. if she could have got her knife in him, she would have killed him. She told him flat out, I don't like you, oh, yeah. I don't trust you, you know? I mean, she won't have none of it. No. I don't know. I, I Like I said, I really... I don't know how I really felt about that. That was kind of a, it was like watching your parents fight. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it You're really like, was. No, yeah. no. Yeah. <laughs> and then you know you you not you don't really cheer for your mom to stab your dad, but you don't really want your dad to body slam your mom either. So no, no one wins there. You know, so I don't know. Um, I just want everybody to get along and love each other. But Maggie, do you feel like she's safe on top of that scaffold? Do you oh, feel no do we way. feel like Glenn is about to swoop in and save her? Do you think there's a possibility that Maggie's fate is still kind of undetermined? Maybe they'll make up for this uh you know a mid-season finale lack of deaths by coming cuz we're still right in the middle of the storm. I mean, when we mm-hmm. come back, we're we're still, you know, nothing's been resolved. No. For the most part. So there's maybe they'll come in with several deaths, you know. That that scaffolding looked mighty rickety. It looked did. real rickety. It yep. did. Um I just think and it would kind of be hot. She should just straddle the wall. Yeah. <laughs> just find the wall nearest to the uh scaffolding if there was wall there and just straddle it. Topless. Right. T O P L E S S topless. She's a country girl. Take her cowboy hat and wave it over her head. All right, we're getting sidetracked. Yeah. Um <laughs> I feel no, like keep going, keep going. <laughs> It's like no, let's let's keep this going. If, if there are any talented artists that are listeners of ours, please draw that. Maggie, I mean, she don't have to be topless, but I mean, it'd be but, cool. uh, all the better. Uh, <laughs> it well, looked like maybe, a warm maybe summer one day. Of both. Maddie, one of both. Matt, uh, I get. I, you got to remember, the people. If anybody listens and thinks, man, Justin gets words twisted up. Remember that I work in radio and I am talking at six o'clock in the morning. So by the time we record this at six or seven o'clock at night. I'm blah, 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 blah. See, I get mush mouth because I have a really wide tongue. I don't know why. But, yeah. I don't want any of our listeners. I don't want you guys to lie to them. These guys are drunk as a skunk when they come in. Like that's that they're just all over the place. The fact that they can form words together is amazing. To yes, be honest, that's impressive. why Matt won't come in the studio anymore. Is because we just we get too rowdy and rough with him. We're too bad at influences. Yeah. you know, he had to stay way way back. He legitimately had to go uh, like a thousand miles away just to feel safe. Is that how far Florida well, is? I don't know. This is, yeah, yeah, it's like it's like uh, five thousand miles. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, something like that. <laughs> Something like that. I think that's their passport or everything like that. Uh-huh. Man, I was so wrong. I, I needed to go back and take geography again. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of Spanish people. I'm seeing more people of other ethnicities than I am actually seeing Americans. So I might be in a different country. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, all right, so I'm trying to think of as we get towards the end of the podcast here, uh, things we have, may or may not have covered. Um, the doctor who we don't like, she got taken. I was kind of like, win. okay, at least if he took a hostage and left us on a cliffhanger, he yeah, took her. <laughs> right? Good pick. I wouldn't have minded if they got out the door and you heard pop, ah, and then he took off. Good night. It's cool. Um I'm trying to think. That would have been a very happy ending. Yeah, right. It'd have been like this is the best episode ever. I, I thought he, she was right. going to be the diversion. He, he was just going to push her into the herd and you know make his way off as, as they were eating. And he's her. still very well could. He might. She's yeah, a very expendable character. Yeah. I mean, they don't. And I kind of am. I the only one? And I might be. When she was talking to him, I thought for a split second she was going to be a part of the wolves or in on it. When she was like, "You're so full of shit." Or whatever. Like I thought for a split second, just for like a tiny second, because you know it's the mid-season finale. Mm-hmm. You're looking for twists and turns, thinking that you know maybe she like like freed him or something, thinking that he was gonna get out peacefully and he didn't. And so she yeah, might so be a mole. That would, that would imply that she that she's been acting like uh, really well this entire time, and I think we both know the answer to that. <laughs> Which in turn she's been all acting very terribly. Just so. cannot give this lady a uh, break. I just I'm with Matt. It's just something about her, man. I just don't like her. I don't I don't know she's why. Terrible actress. I don't believe anything she's doing. I feel like she's a person playing a person in a TV show. And Matt can say that because Matt majored in theater. Oh. Yeah, you know I, I spent a lot of money and a lot of years uh, on the stage, so I know a thing or two. Just a, <laughs> just a thing or two, and one of them is how not to act, and she's doing a great job of it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so insightful. Um, I'm Thank trying you. to think as we go. Um, Anything else we're leaving out of this? Uh, we saw Glenn and Enid for just a second. Someone had said they thought that maybe Enid wasn't a part of the Wolves. Uh, they thought that 
you know, she was just talking about how easily they got in and out of the place, which very well could be, but the way they cut it off just made it sound suspicious. Yeah, so, it was a little leading, yeah. But uh, that very well could be it. I'm also trying to think of comments I saw, um, you know, to, to, to address as we move through. Uh, Maggie stuck on the scaffolding. Uh, her scene was probably one of the most, like, clenched up I've yeah. been watching The Walking Dead in a long time. I just didn't. No, oh, man, I'm just new. It's like I'm at that point now where I just don't, I don't think they're going to kill people off like that. I, I need them to kill somebody main off so I can have that feeling again of like, oh my God, this person could Except die. for Glenn. Except for Glenn. Except for Glenn. Except for Glenn, mm. yes. You know, we got him back. Every time we talk about that, we need to have a little asterisk. Right, except, except for Glenn. Glenn. Are you happy, Kate? Uh. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Uh, I don't think Kay's ever happy. She needs someone to make her happy. I can do that. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's getting saucy in here. Well, I'm going to tell you what. I'm sorry. We'll, I'm um, sorry. It's just it's love at first comment. Kay, you can uh, inbox Matt your contact info and he will take you out for a very lovely dinner. Mm-hmm. Um, All right, Kay. <laughs> she will shit head from Every California, day, by the way. Okay. Um, so I mean that's a all right. So uh, Morgan has <laughs> Morgan has soup, uh, body slammed Carol into subconscious. Uh, yeah, subconscious. She's uh, he's body slammed Carol into unconsciousness. Yeah, um, he, body, he body slammed her in, into into her subconscious. <laughs> right, he slammed he's body slammed her into unconsciousness. Um, uh, Maggie stuck on a scaffolding. Rick and his group are about to be royally screwed by the little baby. Yeah. Um, Daryl and them got stopped by the saviors. We don't know what's going on with our man Aaron or Heath. Um, Michonne had a very small, very kind of smaller role, I guess, in this, wouldn't you say? I mean, oh, she's like a little caregiver, Michonne. She's like awesome. It. She's yeah. awesome. I love Michonne. She's in my top. Like, I'm like, please don't kill Michonne off. Like, Right, you know, right. I feel like I don't that, think you can. Like, even if you try to, it has to be like in order to have her killed, it has to be something really random. I feel really like unlike the comics, they're going killed. to kill her. I feel oh, like I she's going that. to die in the show, and I really don't want it. But um, so I'm trying to think: Are there any characters that we? I wonder have what address. How is Eugene a, a lock picker? What, what, where did he do to, to learn that? He just. Hey, what did oh, he say? Yeah. He just it's knows stuff. Part of his skill set. I just I know that's kind of weird and random. I, can I say to qualifications to having a mullet is you have to be able to pick lock. The guy that plays him, Josh McDermott, is that his name? Yes. He does a fantastic job of playing Eugene. I think he is awesome as Eugene. I, I mean, enjoy his performance. You know, I really, really enjoy him. It's it's good to have some comic relief, mm-hmm. even in in times like this episode where everything is hitting the fan. You know, you can still laugh at Eugene. I, I it's, so he's with the girls and they just watched helplessly as. The wolf made off with the doctor, and Carol and Morgan are both taking naps side by side. Um, Do you think they're spooning at this point? I would hope so. Yeah, kind of like we said, parents fighting. You know, they're made. They made mm-hmm. up at the end. Yeah. Um, I feel like we've addressed everybody. We say that in the first comment. It's gonna be like you didn't mention so and so, but I feel like all the main <laughs> things have been covered, right? Um, yeah. I can't think of any characters that we're leaving out or any any hmm. plot lines we might not be thinking of. Deanna went out, like I said. With some dignity. I thought she yeah. went out like a champ. If I was going to go out, I wouldn't mind going out like she did. She went out fighting, though I would save one bullet for myself. Yeah, because she's getting ready to get ripped apart yeah, and eaten alive. It's going to be so. terrible. I knew yeah. when she fell on that saw that that wasn't going to be it. I didn't necessarily know she was bit, but I mean, mm-hmm. it's, when she hit the saw, I mean, they, of course there was some significance because they kind of lingered on it for a second. But I knew it wasn't going to be just like a simple cut. Like there was something else. And who's afoot. who's leaving their power tools just lying around? Yeah, that's and that's an accident. I thought this was a civiliza- a very civilized yeah. civilization. I thought they were people. living in a society here. Yeah, and I mean, what on was top it, the of last that, episode that uh, what was it? The guy said to Rick uh, when they were putting up the. Uh, because they were doing work on the wall, so maybe that's where they left the power tools out. Could be. Mm, Could I don't be. Know. I mean, you, you know, you never really can prepare for a zombie invasion. So, I mean, there's always that. I mean, you could put the beams on the other side. Let me just say that. I feel <laughs> yeah. like, I feel like, and you know, someone with an engineering degree could probably prove me wrong. But I feel like looking at Alexandria, the 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 beams, the support should be on the inside of the walls, not on the outside. That's just she my mode of right. thinking, though. I mean, it keeps people from climbing in up the beams, and it, you know, resistance. I'm sure we'll get but. some comments about that. <laughs> I have an engineering degree from the University <laughs> of Idaho, good. and I can tell you that those beams should absolutely be on the outside. I would have built a biodome. 
I would build a moat. I am so so shocked we've not we've yet to see a location with a moat, like a death moat. I'm talking like a mm-hmm. hundred feet across, 10, 15 foot deep water with alligators and <laughs> that would be <laughs> ideal. Spikes and you know uh, crackheads and all kinds of things to pull you into too. the water. Yeah, why not? <laughs> you know, I mean, some Tyrone Bigham swimming around there, nobody would get by, and that's what I'm looking at. Or like your your plan on our other podcast. And we said what we would do to survive a zombie apocalypse. Go find a little island. Wait, oh, yeah, I did say that, didn't I? You know, and uh, at least if someone was coming to take your island, you would see them a long ways out, so yep. you'd have a chance to get away. Island. Rick and yeah. his group need to find an island. The lake island, sure. Well, I think that is about it for this podcast. I hope I haven't left anything out. And um, I apologize for being extra stumbly with my words. No, I'm stop ex- it. You sound fantastic. I'm extremely you, exhausted it's, tonight. It's really nice over here. It sounds, I don't know if it's satellites or the cell phone service. It's that awesome it's satellite connection we have with, uh, with Matt. Yep. Matt, we appreciate your dedication to the podcast and joining us via satellite, even though you were on your vacation in the magical world of Disney. You're wonderful. Guys, thanks for having me. Uh, I really miss you guys. I'm gonna be glad to come back. Well, what a wait. So so next Monday, we're not just gonna we're not just gonna not podcast, are we? I can't not do that. Like it's in my it's ingrained in my DNA now. Right. No, we are not going to not podcast. Um, as if you are a fan of the podcast, um, number one, thank you. Number two, uh, please make sure to keep checking our channel, or if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button so it'll give you updates because we're gonna do lots of fun stuff in between now and uh, the Return of the Walking Dead. We have several ideas, um, some videos we're going to do. We might actually go do some Walking Dead target shooting, which is going to be exciting. Um, We're going to do, for example, could Walter White survive in the zombie apocalypse, or more so in the Walking Dead world? Could Jax from Sons of Anarchy survive it? Could uh, the imp from... uh, (laughs) from, uh, Game of Thrones survive, you know? um, You know, just things like that. Charlie Sheen from Two and a Half Men. Maybe. Yeah. Could be, yeah. Yeah. He's got the age, you know. I was going to say, he's yeah. got his own kind of plague to take care yeah. of. But, you know, things like that. It's all things Walking Dead. We'll talk about spoilers, things, uh, rumors for the upcoming uh, return. I want to say the upcoming season, but, uh, you know, the upcoming and second And we can talk half. about the comic book a little bit since the show's off. Why not? Yeah. yeah. So, super comic fans, we can uh, really get... So, there will be a podcast on schedule every Monday night between now and the return... <laughs> Uh, maybe even I'll a few extras. Good. I'll bring some of my action figures, my Walking Dead action figures. It won't be that stimulating for a you know for a, a podcast with no visual, but still you'll it'll hear be a lot in of our fun. voices yeah, because be we'll have that there to uh, to get yeah. us going. Also, don't forget to find us on Facebook, Facebook uh, backslash well, it's Facebook dot com backslash the Podcasting Dead. Mm-hmm. Find us on Twitter. Um, gosh, I can I'm, I'm a terrible Twitter. Uh, handler, I can't remember if it's podcast, podcast dead. dead. I, I think podcast, podcast dead. dead or either dead. Po- yeah, it's podcast dead. That's, That's what it the is. One. Um, at podcast dead on Twitter. We don't have an Instagram yet. What's but, our MySpace handle? Um, you know what? Matt was supposed to get that set up. Matt, what is our MySpace? Thanks a lot. Uh, I screwed the pooch on this one, guys. I didn't think people used MySpace anymore, but then I found out apparently it's popular again. Yeah. And so I just I, I really let you down. And this I'll, guy I'll, thinks I'll he deserves a vacation, like right? Oh. Matt. <laughs> Matt, Matt, Matt. But yeah, find us on I Facebook, find us on Twitter. Um, also, too, we will uh, be working on some cool stuff. We're actually coming back uh, with the return of The Walking Dead uh, in February. We're going to have uh, some giveaways, things like mm-hmm. t-shirts, some action figures, uh, all things Walking Dead. We'll be doing giveaways and promotions. Okay. It's going to be a lot of fun. Lots of uh, exciting things are going to be happening here on the podcast. So, you really? You know, We're keep... developing our own merch, people. Yeah. yeah. So stick with us, and uh, you know, we will reward you mm-hmm. with cool free stuff yep. and uh, hopefully uh, entertaining weekly podcasts. Um, so, yeah, that's I believe that's all. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I need to tell you to go to. Um, I feel like I'm signing off for a while because the, the weekly episodes are gone. Yeah. You know, kind of sucks, but I think we should force them into labor and make them make us an episode every Sunday, every day. I mean, every week, all year. I, that's what I that, think. That'd be fun. You know. Um, but anyways, uh, thank you so much for joining us, and we will see you next week. We don't quite know what the subject will be. We'll figure that out by the time it rolls around. So be uh, looking if you haven't already. Subscribe, and uh, yeah, I'm Justin. Who should go first, me, me or Matt? Matt, do you want to go first? Yeah, I don't know. Is there a delay? Okay, yeah, yeah, I'll do it. So, Joe, let's, all right, yeah, yeah, I'll go first. 
No, I don't. I think I want to go first. Uh, JP's. Uh, okay. Yeah, goodbye. Go go ahead, man. Okay. Yeah. This I, is where you go. I'm Matt live via satellite. All right, guys. <laughs> whoop de whoop. <laughs> goodbye. <laughs>